um, open assessment. <laughs> My name is Tim Calhoun. I'm the executive director at the California Community Colleges Technology Center. And uh, with me to my left is uh, John Haddad. Uh, John is the uh, project manager, or was the project manager for the uh, uh, CCC Assess project, which is, forms the base of this source code. And uh, to my right is uh, Jim Stanley with Unicon, who uh, worked on the project uh, and doing coding and architecture, all that good stuff. So, uh, welcome. Um, Here's our info. We'll uh, have emails, et cetera, at the end of the presentation. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about the product background, what, what's going on here. So we uh, basically got a directive from our legislature. Uh, I don't know how much you know about the California Community Colleges. We have a, 114 colleges in California. Uh, there are about 2.1 million uh, uh, full-time equivalent students in the system. Uh, we are heavily regulated by the state of California, um, and so we got some some legislation. Um, my joke is we have education through legislation in California, um, and so we uh, uh, we got legislation in 2011 that required us to to build out a uh, a common assessment uh, system because the problem that we had is that although we have a state agency that oversees the community colleges, the community colleges are all local education ag agencies. Think about like uh, high schools and high school districts. Um, so they're all locally controlled. So we had over 30 different placement tests being used across California. Um, this was com very confusing for high school counselors to try to, to, to get students ready to come into community college. Um, it was really a problem. So. Uh, uh, we got a directive to, to build a, about build out a new uh, testing platform uh, to do that. We wanted to have tests in English. English is a second language, or ESL, um, and and for math, of course. Um, we wanted to align to uh, the, the K-12 Common Core standards, um, and we did uh, conduct an extensive RFP to look at off-the-shelf solutions, but ultimately. Um, our, uh, our panel of over, I believe, 50 faculty from across the 114 colleges um, turned down all of the ex existing um, uh, uh, products and uh, instead uh, um, uh, went with a proposal from Unicon uh, to, to build a custom solution. Uh, so, as I said, we did align to the state uh, legislation. Um, I think I talked about all this, uh, basically, except that uh, we wanted to make sure that we supported our faculty um, after uh, as students came into these uh, courses. Our, our big problem that we're having is, an, is a, a significant portion of our students, like 60% of our students, were being placed into remedial courses with the existing tests that they had, and so we wanted to make sure that we weren't uh, we, we weren't remediating students that didn't need to be remediated. Um, so that was uh, a part of this as well. So the results were a what I think of as a revolutionary assessment uh, system. Um, we came out with an adaptive placement test that didn't take forever to get through. Um, that produced a prescriptive report for faculty so that they could focus on competency weaknesses. So not only did the test place students into the appropriate level uh, of introductory uh, courses coming into college, but it also provided uh, faculty with a, with a report of where their class was weak in different competencies. Um, so uh, unlike many prescriptive tests that are out there, um, uh, it was able to be delivered in a very short time frame. Um, and that would minimize what's called test fatigue. Um, students that are there for hours and hours eventually just begin you know, selecting randomly just to get through it. Um, ultimately, though, um, and unfortunately for, for the project, um, uh, a new uh, vision for success came out um, uh, that uh, the system was to follow. Um, and basically with that was the idea that we should just take all of our students 
and just place everyone into college level English and math, no more remediation, put everyone into college English and math, and we should support them. Uh, and so some students get a lot more support, other students get less support, and that those support levels would be based on high school grades. So in essence, we changed course and moved away from a placement test. But that leaves us with an opportunity to, uh, to, to take this platform and, uh, and change it in a new direction and uh, I think make it uh, work for, uh, for teaching and learning and for, for classroom. Uh, use. So um, I'm going to hand it over here to John Haddad, and who's going to talk a little bit more about uh, the development. All right. Thanks, Jim. So uh, assessment. Good old assessment, right? Uh, I think that nothing strikes more fear in students' minds, right, uh, than a word of assessment, the idea of having to take an assessment test. Um, I, although I can say that I think after my first day on the, on the job, I'm pretty sure that this is exactly what I look like as well. So I'd say that the one thing that's worse than taking a te an assessment test is probably um, more anxiety with having to build one from the ground up. So I was, uh, I was taken into basically was essentially like, felt like a closet on Butte campus where the tech center is located. Uh, the director of the project, her name was Jennifer, her name is Jennifer Coleman. She, it was my first day on the job. Um, go into the closet and basically do this massive brain dump of, uh, of everything that Jennifer wanted me to do within a relatively short period of time. And so these kind of lays, this kind of lays out a, a very summary, a nice summary of that, of that probably two hour conversation in that closet that uh, identified the things that we wanted to accomplish with the product. We wanted it to be an adaptable, uh, adaptive assessment. We wanted it to be interoperable and very scalable, obviously, with the size of the system. Um, peaks and valleys in the, enrollment, in the enrollment process and the assessment time frame, knowing that it's, you know, we could have several thousand students taking an assessment at the same time. We wanted it to be responsive and make sure that the results were portable from college to college. We integrated, uh, integration with the SIS was something that was common with assessment instruments that were u in use in the, in the system already. And, uh, and being able to provide the information from the assessment instrument into the, the student information system. We wanted to make sure that it was customizable so that for local branding and for local, um, local styles that we would be able to support that flexibility in the platform. And then uh, thinking beyond placement, right? We, the, the ultimate goal was to be able to transition or to be able to, to modify the platform to allow for general purpose testing and assessment, not just a high stakes assessment for placement. Uh, obviously, assess accessibility and security are, are, are at the forefront of all of our minds. So it was nice to be able to build a platform from the ground up with that mindset of making sure that this uh, platform worked for all students, regardless of, of, uh, of ability or p potential any kind of disability, as well as making sure that obviously from a, having a cloud-based assessment platform, we wanted to make sure that it was as secure as possible, preventing any kind of breach. Obviously, our, the content is, is uh, a very expensive <laughs> uh, process to go through in developing and getting that validated. We also needed to make sure that we supported paper assessments. There are, po there are populations within the, uh, within the California Community College system that does not have access to, uh, to the internet, primarily incarcerated populations. So they, they, we needed to make sure that we had, um, that we had paper assessment. And of course, uh, from a, an ADA perspective, paper assessment is also a requirement. So we also, in, in addition to being a, in addition to having the, the test results and the placement recommendations that students received being based on the, how they did in the, in the assessment itself, we actually um, have legislation here in California that requires us to use multiple measures of assessment. And so in addition to looking at the way that the student performed in the assessment itself, we built the, the platform to be able to, to take in uh, high school transcript information and in a di disjunctive manner be able to provide the, stu the student with the placement that where we felt that they'd have the most likelihood of success. So those were the goals that were laid out in that early conversation. And from, uh, from a development perspective, the content development part started a little bit earlier than the, the actual technology development. The, con uh, the content uh, group work group, we had content work groups, faculty work groups representing English, ESL, and mathematics. Uh, 
a lot of skepticism, right? That those initial meetings, people said there's no way that we're ever going to be able to build a, um, a tool that was going to be going to satisfy everybody and make sure it make everybody happy throughout the system. But once we really once we started bringing faculty and those key stakeholders together, we started to realize just how what a powerful message this was and what a what a great way it was to get collaboration amongst departments that may not have ever talked before. So math and English and ESL faculty coming together within the same campus. Camp colleges in the same area, all of a sudden we started realizing that, hey, you know, they started realizing that students could start shopping around and figuring out exactly which is the best placement for them to, to start their college career. And so we started getting faculty from campuses to campus collaborating and working together so that they realized that, hey, we're, we're kind of offering all of the same type of, uh, of offering when it comes to a content perspective. And so, the, so there was a lot, of, a lot of interest was garnered through, through the process. They all started with building out competency maps. And so the, the competency map is uh, really the found, uh, kind of fundamental part of the way that the platform was built in that they identify specific categories. And then within those categories, there are competencies for English language arts as well as uh, for mathematics. In the English language arts side of things, ESL curriculum can go up to, or at one point was offered down to nine levels below transfer level. And so as you can imagine, there's a lot of competencies that we had to, to develop to be able to, to identify and be able to make sure that we're helping those students be successful in their, in their progression. That transition into, so once we had those competency maps all, all figured out and all of the, the faculty had agreed to that, we then started moving over to, to item development, which culminated finally in item piloting that we actually conducted through the actual platform that once, once the platform was ready to go, we were able to, get, uh, to, to start validating the actual tests and by validating the items to be able to, um, to get the assessment approved. And just a side, just a one note here um, is that the, the content itself is not part of the open source offering. I know that that that's, would be highly desirable. Unfortunately, as, as everybody can understand, um, it's, it's, uh, it's a little bit difficult to, to offer the, the content up as well. So the platform development, as, uh, as Tim stated, Unicon was awarded the development partner. Um, and they started early in the early of 2015. I came on as product manager July of 2015, and uh, the, the work had already started building, the Unicon team had already started building out some of the foundation for the platform itself. I was tasked with uh, getting together some key stakeholders who could represent the field uh, from both from an assessment perspective, from counseling faculty, instructional faculty, from IT, from research, there were multiple stakeholder groups that were represented in a work group that I uh, that I led that helped really feed a lot of input into the process. So, our users and our our target end users were in lockstep with us, providing requirements, helping us prioritize features and functionality, and they were they were fantastic. Our platform work group meeting we held I think once a month is when we got together in person. And then we'd also complement that with uh, sprint demos. So we had a lot of folks jumping on and giving us feedback. And it was just great to, to be able to incorporate their feedback in a very agile methodology. So those development efforts continued until early of 2018. Um, as Tim mentioned, there, you know, a bit of a, there's a change going through the, the, the system right now where more focus is being placed on high school transcript information for placement as opposed to the administration of a high test assessment. And so we, 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 stopped, development we stopped development efforts, uh, I believe, January or February of, of last year. So just to run through some key functionality, I'll, I'll try and touch and go on a lot of this because I actually have a recorded demo of the, of the platform itself. So we wanted to make sure that, that there were multiple features and functionality. Obviously, again, accessibility comes down to a, a, a very, very big part from the delivery side. Uh, that often dictated exactly how we prioritized the interactions and the interaction types that we supported in the delivery platform. Obviously, the more complex interaction types presents a much more complex, uh, more complex problems from an accessibility standpoint. And so we, we, we prioritized thing, uh, interaction types that were a little bit more straightforward. 
Uh, we have the ability to have a linear uh, assessment, so you can just progress through all of those. It's a test list. It's adaptive at the testlet level, so not at the individual item level, but each testlet it can be configured with. It could be. I guess it could be one question up to as many questions as you, as you'd like within a given testlet, and then from testlet to testlet, the scoring that the, the student receives on those on one testlet determines whether they'll stay in that kind of same level of difficulty, increase or decrease the level of difficulty. Uh, we also have other tools, navigation, we can, students can go move forward and backwards, we can control whether our students can go backwards and forwards at the item level as well or within the assessment, as well as being having the ability to control whether or not the student can actually pause the assessment while it's in process. And again, uh, the other part of that is the ability to administer paper assessments. And so we have a, uh, we, we didn't get quite to the point where we were integrating with, uh, with Scantron or scanning technologies, but our, that was our long-term vision to be able to integrate with that, those types of, that type of technology. We do have a, we do have a mechanism that's built in to allow for, uh, for the manual entry of the data that students do provide on a paper assessment though. From a proctoring perspective, we wanted to be able to make sure that we had a lot of robust functionality in terms of being able to monitor and see where students are, see where students might have paused an assessment, where they, are, where they may have stopped and get an idea of just how far along they are in the actual assessment itself. So we have the ability to, to be able to monitor. We can, we can set up test locations so that you can actually see in a test, for a given test center what activity has been taking place uh, within a given day. Supporting remote proctoring is also a huge, was huge in California because we know that there are obviously students that are out of state that would be uh, attending st California, the community colleges in California and we wanted to be able to work with any type of remote proctors that could be throughout the country or throughout the world as far as that goes to be able to administer uh, pro uh, the assessments remotely. A lot of controls, and you'll be able to see some of this, where we make sure that we have a passcode functionality to ensure that the, that the st students are only accessing the, uh, the assessment in a very controlled manner. From an administrative perspective, um, we have the ability to manage um, users. We have it's all roles and permission based, and so we have multiple user types, counselor faculty, uh, instructional faculty, counseling faculty, proctors, uh, students, super admin and super admin. So we have a lot, we have multiple roles that are all roles and permission based. We can create and manage, I said, test, test locations and test centers, managing your placement models, and again, based on that competency maps, as well as the ability to customize and localize any type of specific messaging, directions to students, and being able to explain what their placement means and what their next steps are. From a reporting perspective, I've got some examples here. This gives you an idea of what the, what the student would see once they complete their assessment and they get their placement information. This actually is a localized description of what the, the, the recommended course and where, uh, where the student should go for registration purposes. From a little bit more of a diagnostic with a little, with a lowercase d, um, uh, diagnostic, we, have, we basically provide the student and the counselor with the same type of information so that we, that can, can facilitate a conversation that talks about really where, where the student's strengths lie as well as where there are opportunities for improvement. And then finally, we have an instructional faculty report that is uh, as a cohort report. So this is aggregated data for multiple students. As you can see, uh, this one, it says we, there were 60 students that were requested data. We actually ended up having data for 27 students. And uh, you can see that, again, from a cohort perspective, we can see where, where, the, where percentages of the student population falls with the goal of helping to inform the instructional design and making sure that we're helping um, that we're informing faculty members to be able to understand exactly here's what here's where the the skills as where some of the opportunities and weaknesses lay for uh, the the specific cohort of students. And I'm going to pass it over to to Jim now to run us through the underlying technologies. Yeah, before I get started on the technology, I did want to say a few uh, a few things about the development process. Uh, as John mentioned, uh, we had. Uh, fairly regular uh, meetings with the faculty, and they were extremely helpful and uh, very uh, engaged in the process, and I think it led to a really 
good UI and an excellent um, ability to uh, you know to to work with the with the program. So um, <clears throat> I got started after most of these decisions had been made, but um, we it is a it's a pretty modern architecture. Um, recently, we've actually moved to Spring Boot 2 um, and Java 11. So we've moved the architecture up, but it's, it's, a, it's a standard Spring Boot application um, <coughs> with basically a set of microservices that handle different aspects of the, um, of the, uh, uh, of the, of the program. So we'll go to that in just a second. I did want to say we do have the ability to import QTI 2.2. Um, and uh, we obviously do, um, we do have UI that supports MathML. And we have a number of different authentication schemes. And when we talk about, you know, the future of the platform, we, de we developed the authentication for specific um, California technologies, uh, CC, uh, the uh, CCC Tech Center technologies. So, that would definitely be an area where it'd be worthwhile looking at uh, definitely uh, maybe making it a little bit more pluggable and uh, easier to use. So this is an overall diagram of the architecture. And uh, what you're seeing is um, on the left-hand side is, most, is the, uh, basically the forward-facing stuff that uh, people are gonna interact, interact with. And each one of these represents a, each of the yellow things represent a, micro, uh, a microservice. So we have a placement microservice, a user, a dashboard. Uh, and the user is basically uh, the admin now. So that's actually been combined uh, to handle uh, the various, there's support for multiple colleges, there's support for proctors that are associated to different, uh, to different colleges. They have different levels of, um, John mentioned the different roles, but we actually have a, a unique permission set for each API so that you have uh, very fine-grained control over who gets access to uh, what service. Um, we, and we have the dashboards. We have activation, uh, reports, uh, and then on the back side, uh, we, are, we support, um, we broke up the, um, the delivery of the actual uh, assessment uh, into content, so uh, you, and import and delivery. Uh, and then we have a section on rules, and the rules is gonna interact with the placement uh, UI, or with the placement uh, structure or substructure, because that allows you flexibility when assigning how you're gonna work with the competencies and the, and the tests. So, the structure itself, uh, I, you know, having been working with it, I feel like it's it is very well segmented. Uh, it's um, going to be easily extendable. Uh, it's not easily extendable in the sense that you can plug in things, but from the logic standpoint, I think it's very clear. It's very clean how things are put together, so that it should be fairly easy for any competent programmer to get in there and add functionality as people start. Uh, getting familiar with what's, you know, with what they'd like to do. And then this next picture here is just a, a simple structure of a, a single microservice. And what we, what, what the design is here is that we have a set of APIs. We have a core, basically. We have a, and so the core is basically, you know, you're just, um, your objects, uh, your services, that type of stuff. And then on top of that, we, uh, we put the Spring Boot microservice on top of that. So if you wanted to abstract or take out just the functionality and not have it be uh, an actual microservice, it's very simple to pull it out and just use that functionality into another service if you wanted to or not. So the idea was that the microservice is a very thin slice at the top that just gives you the API. So um, again, I think it's uh, the overall structure is uh, pretty amenable f uh, for further development. That's all I got. Okay, um, I'm going to kind of 
jump around here for a second. I'm going to jump over to our to the demo and uh, and take us through that. Okay, so this is the Proctor dashboard. We have multiple ways of searching for students. So internally, uh, the CCC ID is our local identifier for students. It's the primary identification that we use for, for, the, for our system. So that allows us to be able to search. When we pull up a student, we can see if there are any active assessments, completed assessments, or any inactive assessments that may have either expired or that, uh, that are in, in, in process for some progress for some reason. When we look at a specific student, this is the process in which we're going to activate uh, a math ass assessment for her, for the student, I'm sorry. And then we have the ability to, from a reporting perspective, be able to track which accommodations may have been provided to a student. That doesn't actually drive the functionality of the, of the uh, assistive device inside of the, the delivery system. It's just for reporting purposes. We can see if a student has multiple assessments that have already activated. We wanted to make sure that students weren't having the same assessment activated at multiple colleges. And so that's why, from a, uh, from a collision perspective, we're able to track and, and notify proctors of, hey, there's, the student already has an assessment that's ready to go. And so we can see that uh, one thing we're looking at here is, so I mentioned the, the, the proctor passcode. So this is a, a system-generated passcode that ha it has expiring parameters on it. And this is essential. When a student goes into the, to launch the assessment itself, it, they'll, it'll ask for a proctor passcode. And that is something that we can control. So we, can, we have the ability to launch assessments without the use of a, of a proctor passcode. Now we're going to jump in and sign in as the student itself. And so, as you can see, student hasn't completed any assessments, but we do have some inactive assessments that are ready for, ready. we have a, an active one that's ready for launch. Here's where the, they'll enter the proctor passcode. You'll see that I've got my pop-up blockers on there, so it didn't, uh, didn't actually launch the assessment successfully the first time, but I... Uh, get in there we have the ability to to control messaging and so we have the ability to provide general platform instructions as well as assessment specific instructions that are actually part of the assessment content itself these are these were instructions that we provided to the students uh, who are the students who are uh, participating are helping us with the piloting and the validation efforts of the assessment itself and so we hit Accept and continue. Again, this is the uh, assessment specific instructions. We didn't add a lot of content for this specific uh, for test here, but it is customizable. And now the student's ready to begin, and this is where my pop up blocker will get in the way. Okay, and once we get into the assessment, you'll actually see a couple of different reactions. So this, is, this would essentially be a multiple choice or true, true, true false type of, uh, of uh, interaction. Multiple choice with images. Another, another multiple choice. I don't, I don't. I can't recall if this one actually has the branching turned on or not. Um, it, it, we have the ability since we have the ability to control that, and this was just for demo purposes. I think that we don't have this one on. We do have validation, right? So if we're right. so if we're requ uh, requiring a student to have, um, if we're requiring a student to actually respond to to select two answers, that's what is happening in that interaction there, where you could see there was validation that said, "Hold on a second, you haven't selected enough answers to uh, to continue." So this would be a, a short, a short response type of an answer. This is a, uh, a, a select from a from a drop down. Another one of those. I promise we don't usually have the correct answers displayed in our assessments in California. <laughs> this is a uh, a grid matching uh, interaction type. And, and like we support the ability to actually validate that the student has checked basically enough columns on this, so you, right. you have some flexibility on mm -hmm. validation. Yeah. 
this is based on this is with MathML, so we have the ability to render more complex and problems. And then we also have built-in calculator, so that is contr access is controlled at the individual item level. So for this particular item, we were able to uh, the student was allowed to access the the calculator. But on this particular question, since this question did not have a calculator, it just automatically hide, hid the question, the calculator when we got to it. Yeah, and, that, and that concept has been extracted as a tools concept, so you're going to add other things beside calculator. Mm -hmm. right. And then this is, a, this is a longer form response question here. OK. So that's the end of the, the assessment from a, the student's experience. And now we're going to go back in, I believe, as the, as the proctor and look at the results of the, of the assessment itself. So we'll look up that same student. That student no, ha, no longer has any active assessments. We can see that they, she completed the, the math assessment. And then we look at the, the show results. Uh, actually, this is the log. We can actually see when the, the, the assessment was activated, when the student launched it. So we have, we have auditing capabilities to be able to track exactly what happened around a specific activation. And then we also have the ability to see exactly how the student did. So this, this identifies the competencies that based on the measurement of the, that was collected in the actual assessment, we know what competencies the student, we believe, has a pretty good understanding of, as well as what are the competencies next that would help improve that student's measure. This is the, this is the, the placement report itself. And so we, we divide things up looking at the categories within the competencies as well as providing information about the specific sub-competencies in, in, uh, in that category to identify here's what we believe you have skill in and here's what needs to be worked on. Since this was a sample test, that's why you're seeing a lot of areas that don't have an actual measurement. Right, and again, you would be able to also set the permissions, whether or not you want the proctors to be able to see this or not. Right. It's, it's very simple to add turn, uh, basically, endpoints on and off. So. Exactly. So those are, those are, that's essentially what the, what the competency maps look like. So I think that that is, that concludes the demo there. Okay. So when we talk about uh, development and testing, again, we were built to scale. Millions of tests, tester would be, we're, we're at, we were anticipating having to deliver millions of tests a year making sure that every, with every release we had a, a accessibility review and testing, um, as well as identifying and addressing any, any, addressing any of the P1, P2 issues that were, that were identified, as well as the same type of a review for each release from an accessibility perspective. And we ended up delivering, I believe, and through our validation process, we delivered about 10,000 assessments uh, at, at about anywhere from 80 to 100 questions per assessment. So that allowed us to, to, uh, to get the exposure for all the items that were, would have been part of the How many the colleges did we have? You know, we, we started out with, it with 12 colleges who are, are pilot colleges, and that transitioned into s about 17 colleges who were helping us out with the data collection that, were ne that was necessary for the validation process. From a roadmap, pers roadmap uh, consideration perspective, obviously a lot of ours, you know, this was initially designed and built as a, as a placement-based assessment instrument. And so wanting to make, a, a, sorry, placement-focused assessment in uh, instrument. And knowing that we had that in the back of our mind that we really wanted to be able to transition that tool into a general purpose testing platform, we often, we often kind of kept that in the back of our mind, knowing that this, there are opportunities for use directly inside of the classroom, that, there, that this could integrate with an LMS to, to allow for online course assessing, 
as well as being able to take you know, credit for prior learning and any kind of professional development that could have been administered even to faculty and staff at each college. Things that we believe are you know, kind of items that would be of consideration as an authoring tool integration. So we have the ability to imp import QTI-based content, but we don't have an actual authoring tool that's integrated with the platform. Assessment and item scoring are a little bit remedial because they were built very specific for the psychometrics um, and the methodology that, were, that we built for the common assessment tool. So it's a little bit of a, a difference and we would probably take a full day session just to talk about the psychometrics behind it because it was a relatively disruptive approach to the way that we were approaching psychometrics. Wanting to expand LTI support as well as enabling, um, enabling the XAPI caliper New interaction types are definitely, uh, you know, kind of ripe for the taking there, as well as being able to expand in some of the ways that the adaptive nature of the assessment instrument flows, and then um, simplifying the, the installation process locally as well. So that's, those are some of the items that we believe are there for opportunity for enhancing and expanding the functionality. From a next step perspective on our side, we're, we're in the process of going to, next step is going to be to clean up the code and making sure that we have copyrights um, implemented successfully. We're wanting to gather any type of contact information or lists of folks who might be interested in learning more so that we can um, inv extend invitations for meetings that we're anticipating having. Probably most likely towards the end of June, first part of July is when we'd be looking at having those. And, uh, and being ready to, uh, to make it available for you all. So at that point, I think we have all of our contact information, but we will entertain any questions that you guys might have. <laughs> we don't have, we have, looks like we have like seven minutes for, for questions. Yep. That, that was something that we asked we were talking about earlier and I, yeah, I believe we that we did, we did not implement uh, we did not implement the, the lockdown but it was something that we were we were looking at and I believe that it was something that was going to be relatively easy to uh, to enable inside of the delivery system good yeah. question but yeah 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 it was definitely on the table but it felt like got halted yeah <laughs> yeah are, are there any Sakai folks in the room Okay. Is there, is there an interest uh, for something like this to, to tie in with Sakai? Yeah. It's certainly more aesthetically pleasing than, than you know, assessment questions are now. And I mean, that's, you know, it's, I'm not joking when I say that's, it, that's kind of a big deal for students and, and, and faculty. Like, we, we get a complaint all the time that Sakai looks a little old. <laughs> right. So, like, For, for us, our, our hope is that we can extend that platform into teaching and learning. That's what we really would like to do with it. That's where we want to go with it. So it sounds like that's a, that's a synergy there for Sakai to, to, to do that. Um, in the community college system, we've ended up adopting Canvas system-wide. Oh, sorry. Um, in, the, in the community college system, we ended up adopting Canvas system-wide, but we see that there are many, many uses across our system that this could be employed with teaching and learning. And our faculty were deep into helping us build this, and so I think they have a great desire to, to see you know, that, that, uh, that happen as well. Any other? Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, I think the only one that we even partially took a look at was Tau at one point, right. um, but no, we haven't haven't done that. But that's that's great. I mean, that's a, and it's an Imperial project. That's fantastic. Yeah. You, you call it yeah. Serby? Is that
Yeah, that, that, that's yeah. fantastic. That sounds like a nice tie-in. Yeah. 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 Great. Yes? So, so was it implemented like, uh, like each college had its own, or is it like a centralized and then everyone has a Yeah, sort of a multi-tenant centralized system yeah. Yeah. Where, where each college could, they could customize the look for their own college, you know, but, it, but that, that's kind of a model we use a lot because uh, when we're trying to get the colleges to work together. Yeah. Do you have other, like you didn't have to build that from the ground up, like there's just other resources that are shared that you have that central location for? Or? Well, things like, um, we, we had been w working on, on layering things, like we, have a, we, like we have a centralized student account now and things like that, so we were layering on top of previous Previous work to 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 do this, but um, and because yeah. our because our application is uh, is a more is a bit of a, kind of a common application as well. We know we know all the colleges to which a student has applied. So once once a student had completed an assessment, we knew exactly right. which colleges to deliver the placement results to, and those results were then were ran through localized placement models that, that provide the students specific information about each college. Right. That they, right. They have the the rules engine which we didn't talk too much about yeah, yeah but but it it, uh, it could basically provide the the college with and the student with which courses to to focus on to take so it, it right. went down to that level yeah so the multi tenancy actually was baked into ours but because it's api based you could pull that admin out and you know Work a, work pretty simply. Work a way to control access and stuff like that using a, a different yeah. mechanism because it's it's really just a question of modeling the API. Yeah. So uh, and we did that obviously on purpose because there's much development in uh, in the tech center for handling colleges and large amounts of data. So, yeah. So. Yeah. Yes. No. No. I mean, we have the rules engine right now is backed by Dynamo, uh, but it doesn't have to be. Uh, we, uh, in fact, there was a push to maybe move it into Mongo or move the Mongo into Dynamo DB or something like that. So, um, yeah, that's that's definitely not a requirement. Um, so, it, could it be stood up in a local data center then, if there's somebody wanted to do that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you would have to you would have to handle the Dynamo aspect uh, for the rules engine, but but that's also something that you don't have to spin up. So you don't have to spin up placement to get assessments, and you actually don't have to spin up assessments to get placement. So you actually have access to to the and the UI uh, will change to support the assessments, uh, you know, from a proctoring standpoint, admins or uh, just assessments or assessments and placement. So it does all of that. So I would say if you are interested in, uh, in you know, tiptoeing in and to, to, to start looking at this, w this idea with us, we're, we're, uh, we're starting the incubation process with Aperio. Um, I'm sure that we'll be getting the word out um, through, through Aperio for that, but um, we'd love to have any contact information so we could, uh, you know, we could at least let you know when, when things are getting going with this, but uh, as we're, we're, we're ready to go basically in the June, July time frame, I think. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.